today's tutorial is all about creating another Pokemon and we are going with one of the originals, Gengar himself. Let's check it out. How's it going everyone? My name is Jason Ortega and here with Blended Graphics. As mentioned before, today is another video about creating one of my favorite Pokemon and we're going with my favorite ghost type, we're going with Gengar. This will be episode number 2 in our Pokemon series. This also marks day number 26 in our 30 days of Photoshop, so we are just winding down to the very end here, not too much left. And this specific video is actually going to be a two part episode. Uh, for this very first episode, we are just going to create Gengar using all a bunch of different animal textures to bring him to life. And then our second part is we're going to put him into this haunted house scene, uh, this really spooky environment, add some really cool glowing effects to tie everything in really nicely. So check back in again tomorrow for that episode. Before we start out with this composition, I just want to send out a huge thank you to anyone that's watched these videos from day one and has made it all the way up to this point. I truly appreciate that support. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, let's jump right into this composition and let's get going. So let's turn on Gengar. He's gonna be our base image that we're gonna use as a model. And we're just scaling him up a little bit. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to make selections of every part of his body to help us out that we're later going to attach these different textures to. So I'm just using the pen tool and going around to different body parts of Gengar, filling that with a solid color. In this way, later on, once it's time to start working with those specific areas of the body, it's gonna be really easy to that we have these selections. All right, so you get the general gist of what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and skip forward to after we have all of those selections. All right, I also went ahead and grouped everything together so that way I can keep myself organized. And the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna change up this background color just to something maybe a little bit more gray so it's not too hard on the eyes. Um, and this might be a little bit too dark. I can't really see his right arm very well. So let's go back in here and let's find a lighter shade of gray to use. So something right here looks good. Yep, that's much better. Okay, let's first turn on our first animal that we're gonna use as a texture. And I'm using the lasso tool to get his left ear and I'll press Command J to create a selection of that. And let's do the right side now. We'll just create a selection. And once we have the selection, press Command J. Excellent. All right, let's turn the right one off and we're gonna start with the left ear. Command T to transform. Let's bring this down and rotate it to where we want it. We can command click on this corner up here just to get a different perspective. Okay. And we can now just erase some of this area that we don't need. So something like that. And we'll try to get some of this green fringe. We will go back in and clean this up a bit. So no worries. All right, so now we're going to one of my custom hair brushes that I made. And this was a brush that I made in one of my earlier videos that you can also go back and watch if you're interested. It's always a good brush to have in your, in your tool set here, especially when you're working with a lot of hair textures. And right now we're just going into these brush settings, changing things up a little bit just to create a more intricate brush and something that gives it a bit of variety. All right, so this will just about do it. Okay, and then what we want to do is on the layer mask of that ear, we're going to come in here, paint white, and just bring back some of that texture along the ears. We have to be careful because there is some green, but we're actually going to go back in on a separate layer and sample some of the colors on his ears to help, again, create that texture. So that way we don't have to worry about the green fringe. And that's what we're doing right now, just a little bit. Okay, looking good. All right, so now let's go ahead and add that purplish color. We're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and clip it below. And we wanna to go to our greens channel and let's just go ahead and desaturate that so that way we don't have to worry about that fringe. And then we can go back to our master, click colorize. And let's toggle this over to that purple color and we can play around with the saturation a bit just to find a nice happy medium of a tone that works well with what we're going for here. Okay, so that should just about do it. Let's close out of this and we're gonna bring back the rest of his body. So let's turn those back on. 
And let's go to that ear and let's just get rid of that. So we can erase that part of it. And now we have his ear. Okay, so before we actually get to his right ear, I'm gonna start working on his body because I think that might help first. And we're gonna use this dog image um, and we're gonna use his fur here for his body. So we're gonna scale him up and let's go back to our lasso tool. And we're just gonna create a nice selection around here his main chest area, and then we'll hit Command J. And then we're gonna right click on that layer, convert it to a smart object, and let's lower the opacity so we can see his body from behind, and Command T to transform, and let's rotate this and scale it down just a bit, and just find a good spot that I think covers the majority of his body here. So something right around here, we can then uh, right click, go to warp, and now we're just gonna fold in some of these areas around his body just so that it wraps around his form. We want to give the impression that the fur is rounding out and not just very flat and two-dimensional. And now that we have this, let's go ahead and command click on our body outline to create a selection. And then we're going to hit the layer mask so that way we are just restricted to his body and nothing outside of it. And just like his left ear, we now need to use a fur brush and paint some of that texture back in along those edges. Uh, we can also use a couple of different brushes as well to achieve this effect and help give us some variety. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now. I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, here we are, I'm back. And I decided I was just gonna finish up the rest of this body since it's all repetitive. Um, I'm now gonna apply those same steps with his right ear, so let's do that. And now we have both of his ears and his body all ready to go. And now we're bringing in our new animal here and we're gonna use the lasso tools to create a selection of this guy's arm. And let's Command J to create a copy of that. And this will now be used as Gengar's right arm. So let's go ahead and flip this around and just kind of get it to a good area. We can scale it down a bit and let's paint away some of this area that we don't need on his arm. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of this arm, flip it horizontally, and we're going to use this one for Gengar's left arm. So we'll put it in a good spot and we can reduce the opacity on this so we can see the arm below. And go back to warp just to wrap that fur around and go back to painting some of that texture back in. And we now need to use a hue and saturation adjustment layer to turn that arm purple. And once we have that done, we're gonna repeat those exact same steps with his right arm. So we need to erase these edges and then paint some of that texture back in, refine some of the areas around the claws, and then we need to turn his arm purple. All right, so now we're gonna shift towards his feet and start working on that. Uh, but before we do that, let's actually change up the color of his ear a little bit and just kind of make it match better with the rest of his body. So something right here looks, I think, a bit better than it was before. And now we can bring in our new animal. Now we're gonna use it as a texture and we'll repeat the same process. So let's use the lasso tool and we're gonna just use his foot here. So we'll make a copy of that by pressing Command J. And then we can bring in our other animal that we're gonna use and this is also gonna be part of his leg. Command J for a copy. So now we have the textures needed for his feet. Let's drag these down to their respective locations. And we're gonna start with his left leg. So we're gonna scale this texture down, rotate it a little bit, and let's use the warp tool to help wrap this fur around his leg. And now we're just painting back some of this texture in. You know the process, we're just doing the same thing over and over again here. It gets really repetitive. 
Okay, so with this next texture, I only really need the foot. So I'm just erasing away the extra parts that is no longer needed for this. And we can place this underneath our other texture, scale it down and fit it just in a good spot for us. So this looks good. And you already know the rest of the process. So let's jump ahead once that's completed. And here we are with that. Right now, Gengar just looks like a fuzzy mess and doesn't look like anything special at all. But just hang in there because I promise you we're going to turn him into something cool. Okay, so let's push forward and start working with his right leg. We can turn those outlines on. And I found this really cute picture of these bear cubs and we're going to use this foot. I think it's perfect for this image. So let's make a copy of that by pressing Command J. And we can drag this down into that right leg group. And we're just going to go back to this texture here, make another copy of this polar bear's leg. And this is going to be used for Gengar's leg as well. I'm also going to speed through this section, so I will be back. So now Gengar has all of his limbs in place. Let's go ahead and move forward and let's work on his eyes. So we have his eyes outlined here and we're going to drop in this cat image and we're going to use our cat's eyes. They are nice and mysterious and I think it's going to work well with this composition. So we can copy some of these selections and we're just going to start with his right eye and let's place it into a good spot. I'm then going to command click on that right eye outline and then add a layer mask. And let's do the same thing for the left eye and get that into place. Okay, let's now load up a selection of that left eye. And then we're going to add a layer mask. Let's turn back on our original Gengar image and we're going to use this as a reference. And with this image up here, let's click on this little chain um, that connects our layer mask. And this way it's going to let us move around our eye while still being bound by the layer mask itself. And we're just going to move this into a spot that kind of matches what we have with Gengar. And let me tell you, this was probably the hardest part of this whole composition was just getting these eyes in place. It took me definitely an hour or so to get them just to the way I want them to look. I think the eyes were really hard to accomplish and maybe it's just because it was something new for me, but it definitely took some time. I also want to point out just during that time I was talking, I did make a copy of that right eye and move that over to the left eye instead. And then I got that in place. OK, so what we need to do now is let's turn these eyes red so we can go ahead and add a human saturation adjustment layer, clip it below and let's just move around this hue a little bit and find a, a good spot for us that really makes his eyes pop. And he's looking nice and evil. I'm satisfied. I want to bring back our cat image in now and I'm going to create a selection of the eyelids here and we're going to use this to help give our Gengar some more personality and help with the facial expressions. And I'm going to start out with this right eyelid. So we're scaling it down, erasing the majority of this since we don't really need it all. Let's just clean up the edges a bit. And going back to a hard round brush, I'm going to bring back some of the eye. OK, let's move this down a bit and now we need to turn it purple. So going back to the human saturation adjustment layer. This is looking really good. I like it. OK, let's start working with the left eyelid now. And for this one, I'm going to use the puppet warp tool and we're just going to put some pinpoints in here. And again, this is going to help create that shape that I want to help give the expression that I'm also aiming for with Gengar. OK, so let's drag this down here. And we're going to scale it down. Let's lower our opacity as well so we can kind of see what we're working with. And let's just find a good spot here. And I think this is just about where I want it. OK, 
And now let's go ahead and erase the parts that we don't need. Okay, and with that done, let's go ahead and move our eyelid down a bit. And then we're going to try to angle this so it's reflective of what our right eyelid looks like. And we can paint away some more of this. Now we just need to turn it purple. And then I'm going to go back to my fur brush. And we're going to use this to help blend it in with the rest of the body. I now want to go back to my Puppet Warp tool because the eyelid edge is just a bit too jagged for my taste. So let's go ahead and fix this up a bit. And this looks much better. All right, and Gengar wouldn't be Gengar without a nice cheeky smile on his face. So let's start working on that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a selection of our mouth. And we're going to fill that in with a really deep purple. So let's do that. And this tooth here is a 3D asset that I got from Envato Elements. So we're going to use this for his mouth. I'm going to rotate this around and using our top image, we're going to use that as a reference point. So let's lower the opacity of this tooth and just try to form it to help match the spacing of our reference image. So something right around here. And you know what I'm going to do instead? Let's actually create a selection of our mouth up top. Let's do that first and drag that down to our Gengar. So that way I don't have to keep going back and forth. Okay, let's actually rotate this a bit. All right, so I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. Okay, and now let's bring back our tooth and let's drop that down. And once I have this in spot, I'm gonna right click and go to warp. And let's just try to make sure that the entire tooth is being filled out. Okay. And you know what? I'm actually gonna bring this tooth over and use it for the left side. I think it makes more sense since it kind of has that line down the middle. So let's repeat the same things. We'll go back to warp and let's fill this out. Okay, and now we can go ahead and race the edges that we don't need for this tooth. And that looks good. All right, so going forward now, I'm gonna speed this up since we're doing the exact same steps. I'll be back with you in just a moment. So now that his mouth is in place, I think this is pretty much the point where I started to see the true potential of this composition and really had help for it. Um, this is also the fun part where we're going to start giving him some shape and we're going to start adding some shadow. So let's go to this soft round brush and we're going to start on the body here and let's just darken this up a little bit. We're going to start to, again, like I said, just make him feel more three dimensional instead of very flat. And I think this area by his foot looks a little funny to me. So I'm going to create a selection of some of this fur on the left side, just using that lasso tool. And let's just create a copy of that, drag that to the right and blend that in. And I think this is going to feel a bit better. So let's blend that in. And then we can resume with adding the, the shadow all around his body here. And once we are done with the body, we're gonna have to apply these same techniques with the rest of his body, do his arms, legs, ears, and even his teeth. And we need to give that some shape as well. All right, what I wanna do now is I wanna go back into the human saturation layer of our right eyelid. And I wanna adjust this and help match the tone a bit better so it's consistent with the rest of his body. 
So this looks much better. And now we can go ahead and continue on with the shaping of our character. We'll continue back with the area around the mouth and the eyes. So right now I just want to create a bit more depth uh, with his eyes, make them look a little bit more sunken in so it doesn't look like they're just kind of floating on top. And the easiest way to achieve this is just darkening up those areas close to the edge of the eye and giving a bit of a lip. All right, now let's move down by his teeth and we can start giving a bit of shading above his teeth and below and start giving him an upper and bottom lip. And I'm not trying to really go overboard with this area. I only want to give it just a bit of depth. All right, and now I'm going to tweak the colors a little bit of his right leg. So let's go into that group layer and go back to that hue and saturation adjustment layer. Let's close all this out, find what we're looking for. Here we go. And let's just kind of tweak this a bit. All right, so from here on out, let's go ahead and add shaping to the rest of his body. And I'm going to speed this section up again, just like the previous ones. Be back in a second. And I'm back and his body is looking really good right now. I want to make his eyes a bit more sunken. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment to his eye. Really bring up the shadows, increase that. So something like here, we can boost up the midtones. All right. And then I'm going to invert that mask by pressing command I. And let's paint some of this area around the edge in. And this is going to, again, just make it look a bit more menacing and more realistic. And let's do the same thing with the right side. Go back, add a levels adjustment. And let's bring up those shadows. Okay, and let's hit Command I, invert the mask, and let's get to work on this eye. So we're just sticking to the edges here. Let's throw an exposure adjustment layer on top as well and darken it up just a bit more. So we'll hit that up. And then we're going to do the same thing with the left eye. So let's add another exposure layer, clip it below, and then just paint again some of these corners and just under the eyelid there. All right, so both the exposure adjustment layer as well as the levels gave us that sunken and depth that I was looking for for his eyes. Let's move to his teeth, and we're going to darken this up by using an exposure adjustment layer. So let's just lower this a little bit. And then I want to give it a more of a purplish tone. So I'm using a hue and saturation adjustment layer for this. Let's hit colorize and let's go towards that purple side. And we can reduce the saturation on that a bit. So something right around here. And we can even go back to our exposure adjustment layer. Just lower the opacity just a touch on that. And then what I want to do is add a new layer on top of all of that. Clip it below. And this is going to be the layer where we start adding some shaping to his teeth and give it some shadow just behind the lips there as well, just to make it more realistic. So we're just painting around the edges. And I'm speeding through this real quick. Okay, and now let's give his teeth some texture. So I'm going to find like this nice grunge brush to use. And we're just going to give it a little bit of texture on his teeth and just give it some more character. And we don't want to go overboard with this effect, just a couple of dabs here and there just to give it a little something. All 
All right, I'm adding a new layer and going back to a soft round brush. And we're just going to add more shadows to his teeth and do a little bit more work on that just to make it a more exaggerated effect. So just like before, let's speed through this. Be back in a moment. Okay, we are pretty much at the end here. Um, there's only one other little thing I want to do, and that is just do a little bit more work on his eyes, add some highlights and a bit of glow. So with a, let's find a good orangish color to use, and this is going to be our highlight. So let's do a couple of dabs just on the center there. Okay, and then we can find a good blend mode to use. Maybe something up here. We'll do color dodge. That looks good. All right, and we'll add a new layer. And this one is going to be our glows. So let's go back to our colors and let's find something a bit more red. So something right here and we can hit OK. And then we'll do some overall glows around his eyes. And we can even take it a step further. Let's add a new layer on top and let's do a third round of glows. So we can increase the brush size a bit, lower the opacity, and we can even find a nice blend mode to use. And I think that's going to do it for us. So let's take a quick peek of how he looks. And we definitely came a long way from this. I like how it turned out. Hopefully you did as well. And this is going to be the end of this video. Like I said, this is a two part episode. So please come back in tomorrow where we're going to put him into this really cool and spooky background, add some awesome effects and hopefully give you some more tips and tricks along the way. Thanks a lot for joining me for this one. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please drop me a comment if there's something you want to see me recreate in the future, a new Pokemon. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you really like these videos and you want to see more from me. Take care everyone and be safe.